Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video I'm going to summarise the progress update that was provided by Neuralink yesterday. Specifically, we're going to look at the change in architecture of their device and their goals for the surgery process. Then we'll talk about the three little pigs and the cool advance being made in the reversibility of these devices. And then I'll discuss in more detail more the technology and science behind these devices as they discussed it in a bit more detail in this progress update than they did in their original announcement a year ago. And then at the end, I'll talk about what their vision is and my thoughts on the company and the device. So firstly, what is Neuralink? Well, Neuralink is an American neurotechnology company founded by Elon Musk back in July 2016, and they are trying to develop implantable brain-machine interfaces. The main purpose of this device is to be able to solve important brain and spine problems with a seamlessly implanted device. I say this has the potential to treat different neurological problems such as memory loss, hearing loss, insomnia, extreme pain, paralysis, brain damage, addiction and strokes. Just a couple of examples. And to summarise how this brain machine interface could achieve this in a simple statement, it is purely by exploiting the fact that different neurons within the brain communicate via electrical signals. These electrical signals are generated by the movement of positive ions across the membrane of neurons. When the signal reaches the end of a neuron, there's a chemical signal that transmits it to the next neuron that then has another wave of electrical signals that transmits through it. The way that Neuralink can exploit this information using their brain machine interfaces is by being able to detect these electrical signals that they refer to as spikes that are otherwise referred to as action potentials. And so they can effectively read the signal of the neurons. But more than just being able to read these signals, they can also stimulate the, the activity of these neurons. So what sets Neuralink apart from other currently available devices that can manipulate and read neuronal signals is the architecture of their Neuralink device. And so this architecture has actually changed from what I described in my last video talking about Neuralink. So this is best seen in this image here, where you can see last summer they had a device that was actually behind the ear connecting to these individual devices that were being able to record the neuronal activity. Whereas now they've simplified it, whereby now there's just a coin-sized device that replaces part of the skull and connects to the cortex, the outer region of the brain, by tiny wires that they refer to as threads. So the company refers to this device as Link, and each link contains 1,024 channels. And the idea is that this device is so small that it is flush with the skull. So it actually replaces the region of the skull that's cut out. And so the idea is that you won't be able to see it. So it will only leave a small scar such that you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that someone's even got the implant. And Elon actually jokes within this um, update conference that he could have one and we wouldn't actually be able to tell. So the main point is that this device is therefore portable and the other neat feature is the fact that obviously this is an electrical device, it needs to be charged and so the device can be inductively charged and so it can be used up during the day and then charged at night without needing any wires to connect between the device and some power supply. So all of this has been designed with practicality, portability and I don't know, visual appeal in mind. However, it leaves another problem, which is how can the signals be interpreted and then stimulated in a manner that is most effective without being connected to some computer? So this is the idea behind brain machine interfaces. So firstly, you need to be able to detect the signal. And as I mentioned before, this is by measuring the electrical signal recorded from these neurons. But then secondly, that signal needs to be interpreted and understood. And once it's understood, that new sensory information can be fed back into the brain to stimulate the neurons. And so this interpretation of the signal can either happen in the outside world or it could happen on chip. That means happening on the device such that there isn't a need for an external interaction between the device and some other device, whether it's a computer or a phone. And so the more neurons that can be detected by the devices, the better the predictions can be and therefore the better and more effective the stimulation and feedback to the brain can be. So the two major challenges that Neuralink faces is one, being able to get these devices, these implantable technologies into the brain in an accurate and 
minimally invasive manner without causing any risk and brain damage. And secondly, being able to understand and interpret this data using algorithms that can detect the frequency and shape of these neuronal signals and actually try and understand them and interpret what they mean to be able to correctly stimulate and feed back to the brain. So the first challenge can be solved by having a virtuously automated system. And so in this more recent update, they showed more info about their robotic systems that can actually do this in plants. So this is what one of their surgical robots currently looks like. And the idea is that getting a link could be a process pretty much done, all done by this one surgical robot, making the process less than an hour, whereby you could leave the hospital the same day and it could be done without general anesthesia. And if you're a little bit squeamish, maybe just look away for a moment. But what you can see in this image is the precision with which the surgical robots can insert the different threads. And this insertion is so precise that it can deal with the fact that the brain actually kind of it moves as you breathe. Um, and so this insertion can happen without any bleeding, causing minimum risk to the patient and automating the whole process and making it efficient and the safest way it could be done and reproducible. So currently this insertion is limited to the cortical surface, the outer region of the brain, but in theory by having longer threads they could go deeper into the brain in the future. But there's a lot of low-level processing that actually occurs in the cortex, such as motor responses, sensory and visual interpretations, as well as auditory responses. And so by having the stimulation within the cortex, it could be used to solve paralysis. And so the second challenge of being able to interpret and understand these signals comes down to do these link devices actually work? And so this question was raised in the new update conference and we're introduced to three little pigs, Gertrude, Joyce and Dorothy. And so the difference between these pigs is the fact that Joyce didn't receive any implants whilst Gertrude did and Dorothy is, I suppose, the most intriguing and interesting update to come from this announcement, was actually given one of the implants but later on it had the implant removed. And so this demonstrates the reversibility of these devices. And so all of these pigs are healthy and happy, but the only insight we get to whether or not these devices work is from the real life demo of Gertrude, who as I just mentioned, has one of these Neuralink implants. And Gertrude actually has the Neuralink implants connected to neurons that are in her snout. And so I'll put a link to the progress update in the description but if you've already seen it you'll know that you hear these beeps which are real-time signals coming from the snout such that you hear the beeps every time the snout is touching something effectively and so this real live demo demonstrates that you can read these spikes you can read the electrical activity in real time from these 1024 electrodes and the second bit of information we get about these devices working is from other studies they've done where they've had pigs on a treadmill and they've been able to record the brain activity and try and predict the position of the limbs. And so using their predicted information, they can compare it to the actual position of the limbs and see how effective their algorithm in terms of under understanding and interpreting these neuronal signals are. And so I think from, from the information given so far, seems like the device is able to read the brain activity. What isn't so clear yet is how effective, if at all, it is at being able to write and feed back into the brain. And so hopefully in later updates, we'll get more insight into this. So, so far we've seen it in pigs. And just to point out, one of the arguments for using pigs is they're quite a good model in terms of having similar anatomy to humans and similar biomechanics. And the fact that the have relatively low needs and so their welfare is pretty well kept and Neuralink have published onto YouTube a separate video talking more about the treatment of the animals that they have for their testing. But what about humans? Well it was also announced by Elon that they're now heading towards human clinical studies. They've received FDA breakthrough device designation in July and so they're now preparing for first human implantation soon pending uh, required approvals and further safety testing and this human clinical trial 
is currently said to be for tetraplegia, which is paralysis caused by illness or injury that results in partial or total loss of use of all four limbs and torso. And so the idea is that by thinking about movement, the Neuralink device will be able to induce the movement and to overcome this paralysis. So the short-term goal of Neuralink is to be able to treat these different neurological disorders. But what about the long-term potential of Neuralink? Well, one of Elon's visions is to eventually, as a long-term goal, be able to preserve and enhance your own brain, including examples such as being able to record and store your memories, being able to better understand consciousness, and to have superhuman vision and telepathy. And the idea is he would like to create a well-aligned future whereby there's full brain-machine interface and symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So some of these more interesting updates came from the question and answer section at the end of their presentation. And one of the big major questions was on the security of the device. And the company announced that it should be encrypted and authenticated. And it's obviously something that they're taking into account whilst developing these different models. And the other concern is obviously always going to be the safety and the long-term preservation of these different models within the the brain, which is obviously a very corrosive environment. And so this heavily depends on material science and the different materials actually used to create these devices such that they can easily still be able to detect and measure the electrical signals and feedback whilst having insulation from the the external and surrounding environment. And so this is what I was saying about earlier, that it's a good achievement for them to show now that these implants are effectively reversible and can be taken out. For example, if there was any defects or cause for concern about it causing damage within the brain. And also it provides a way of them providing newer updated models that can then be replaced. So it to some extent would circumvent the need for it to to last for extended periods of time and instead maybe between the time range of five to ten years. However, what I think really is a major concern for the company in these devices is one, how effective their stimulation can be. As I said, the reading might be quite good, but it's more important to be able to get the correct and effective writing and that stimulation back into the brain for it to be an effective device. For example, you don't want unwanted movements or unwanted consequences. Neither do you want the system to be hacked by interference with other people nearby who've also got devices they could be stimulating your leg movement. I mean, I have no idea whether that's even possible, but there are all kind of questions that need to be raised at an early stage before these kind of wild abstract ideas are kind of put in people's heads. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done in terms of the safety of these devices and also the longevity in terms of whilst using these devices might be able to treat age-associated diseases such as loss of vision, memory loss, and um, improved um, control over your movements. There's also the concern of would it reduce your lifespan or health span by having these devices because it's overstimulating the brain potentially or um, requiring more I know, brain power. And I think there could, be, there could be unintended consequences that maybe haven't been considered yet. And so I'm a little bit sceptical. I think the idea of this link device is great in terms of treating neurological disorders. Going further than that at the moment, I'm a little bit on the fence. I think I would have to wait to see more of their research. But what I can say is all these new announcements are very exciting and interesting. And yeah, um, the other thing I haven't mentioned is the cost. According to the Q&A, um, obviously initially they probably will be quite expensive, but Elon envisioned that eventually it could come down to a few thousand dollars. However, that would still mean that isn't an accessible price to everyone. And so all I can really summarize from that is what Elon also says, which is the future is going to be weird. And I think I do agree with him on that. It kind of summarizes it all very well. It's very exciting research. It's something we've never really seen before. And I mean, I'm excited, interested, a little bit scared, a little bit skeptical, but I think we can only wait and see to find out more. So hopefully you've learned something from this uh, very condensed summary. Um, And as always, thanks for listening.